Um, I'm over from New Zealand. Um, I um, live in Auckland. Uh, I based at the University of Auckland. I'm a director of co-director of an organisation that's called Ngāpā Te Maramakana, which is New Zealand's Māori Centre of Research Excellence. And you talked a bit about your work and also the ethos that you, you, you your research is based around three main... Sure. So Ngāpā Te Maramakana has a network of around about 200 odd people throughout the country, Māori researchers, all Indigenous researchers. Um, and uh, our work clusters around many things, but I like to summarise it as um, research that contributes to us being able to live well, uh, to live lightly on the planet, um, and to, you, to live uniquely as Indigenous peoples, as Māori peoples um, in the world. Yeah. And can you talk a little bit about each of those streams? Sure. So, um, in terms of living well, we have a stream that's called uh, Māori Ora, um, loosely translated as meaning uh, human flourishing. Um, so when I s talk about living well, um, I'm hugely conscious of the fact that um, for many of us as Indigenous people, as Māori people, we're just still trying to survive. Um, and so when we say living well, there are many extremes in that, there are many challenges um, for us in, in that as well. So challenges to health, challenges in terms of housing and good nutrition, food security, good water supply, work, all those sorts of things. So it's one cluster of uh, research activity. Another cluster is around um, around Māori economics or economics. Um, and increasingly our focus is moving towards sustainable economics. So rather than simply making profit for profit's sake, um, off our lands and, and other resources, to thinking carefully about that, the way in which we impact our ecologies, impact the planet, uh, and also thinking about the state we we're going to leave um, the planet in for the next generations to come. So into that equation comes things like climate change and environments and the like. Uh, and then the third area, which is um, living uh, uniquely, um, brings in a whole language, the importance of language, the importance of, of culture, uh, the part that co culture plays in our lives, the stresses upon culture and language in terms of culture change um, and, so um, one, and development. We've got one fly here. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's another stream I missed out there which is the environment. So we've got economics and the environment, they kind of like are two streams that kind of like go together. So living well, living lightly, and living uniquely as Indigenous peoples. Fantastic. Now, you presented a little bit about death rituals. Mm. What's your work involved there? What are you looking at? Right, so, I've um, been looking at, um, it, for me, I've been sort of working in the end-of-life care space, in the death ritual, ritual space, and when I say death ritual, there's a whole spectrum of rituals that we can potentially um, engage in, and that can be defined under that particular term. But irrespective of what those rituals are, if you sit long enough with them, you'll actually find that those rituals are more about life than what they are about death. They're about more about renewal, um, about rejoicing, about um, re rekindling uh, and reconfiguring relationships and networks uh, in order to um, for us to be able to help each other to sit well together. Um, you know, and it's also about helping the spirit on into the next world. It's also about living well uh, with um, those who have departed. So while they may have gone into another dimension, it doesn't mean to say that they've left our lives com completely. You know, as a psychologist, one of the interesting things is that memories are very hard to get rid of. Once you've got them, it's very hard to get rid of them. Um, even though, as a psychologist, I know that there's methods that we can use to actually mediate those kinds of things. But memories are really, really good for us, um, especially in terms of those people who have departed and they're our way of actually taking them forward in our lives. So, so those who are, are past, they don't disappear out of our lives, they don't disappear out of our memories, they're very much part and parcel of, of the futures that we hold. So. That's, 
a no-brainer, really, in terms of how Indigenous peoples uh, think about the world, think about life and death, and, and the way in which uh, spiritual dimensions sit very much with our ordinary everyday dimensions. But it's something new and kind of fantastic in terms of the Western world, who have kind of like maintained a position of you've got to let go, you've got to detach, you've got to get over, um, and you've got three days to do it in. Um, and that really isn't a very healthy way of, of um, carrying out a healing process. So I guess my talk this morning was really simply affirming and having faith in institutions, rituals, customs that our ancestors made for us for us over centuries. Um, and um, we shouldn't just put them aside just because some uh, dominant group has come along and said, no, you've got to do it like this. You know, have faith in what we know, have faith in what our ancestors made for us. Um, it's worked for them. There's no reason why it shouldn't work for us in the present. And in the context of where we are at the Suicide Prevention Conference, where, what were you trying to get across in that way? Well, it was, a, it was a talk that was kind of like at the end of the conference. Um, I think people have heard a lot about the statistics, how bad the problem is, the suffering that's going on, um, the um, things that people are trying to do to uh, either prevent suicide or to look after uh, families who are bereaved by suicide. So I guess all I was trying to say, in the light of all of that, um, remember that actually we've got some bloody good ways of doing things. Um, that we've got ancestors in our lives that are there to hold us. Um, that we've got um, rituals in our lives that are there to comfort us, to heal us, to give us hope, to give us purpose in life, to enable us to live well. So, I mean, that's really the simple message that I was trying to say in that 15 seconds, 15 <laughs> minutes slot um, that we had um, this afternoon. And fantastic to hear about that. Thank you for doing that. I'm interested in your takeaways generally. What, what, what is your takeaway from the conference? Oh, that there's a huge um, sense of urgency, and I think that's really, really important because sometimes we get worn down by um, what are very, very heavy, heavy topics. And... Um, you know, sometimes we've got to take time out, um, but what's been really um, important is that we still have to maintain a sense of urgency because the situation is critical. There are people who are dying, young people that have lives ahead of them and that we cannot stop from trying to do something. Um, so, I mean, that's um, really promising, it's really hopeful, um, and I think that... Um, uh, you know, for a, a, a group of people here in Australia, you know, sort of a very, very small percentage of the whole population living in the face of dominance every day, we have society saying, you're no good, you're not worth anything, you know. Um, to stand up in the face of that and carry on is a really brave thing. So for me, I go away with a lot of hope um, and, and there's a promise of some bright tomorrows. So, yeah. Thank you so very much.